Okay, we're going to go through and look at this uh, hack for this back plate or back of head protector. So we have the three components that we have. We have our mask here. This is a blue gauntlet mask. This should work for any uh, mask out here. Um, this one will be working with the tongue that's, uh, that's uh, around here. And we'll leave it. Some masks don't have this tongue. Uh, this one does. And so we have to sort of work around this. So that's your mask. This is the ponytail backplate, uh, which is designed, I guess, for uh, softball. Um, you can see that I've added a, I drilled a hole down at the base here. Um, that's one addition. And that size of that hole is going to depend on uh, what you use to connect it. You can either use paracord, or in this case, I'm going to use a zip tie just for ease. Um, I had used it originally with a much larger zip tie than I'll be doing uh, today and demonstrating this, but again, the size of your hole will depend on you know how much space you need for your zip tie. This is kind of overkill for, this hole is kind of overkill for that particular one, but that's what we're using uh, for today. Okay, this originally came with a bunch of straps to strap it onto the back of a catcher's mask. Uh, but I've removed all of that today, so and we're going to use these bottom two slots down here as part of it. So what we've done on the inside of it here is, originally this had padding all the way up on both sides, and I went through, I put this on top of this, and I traced it with a Sharpie, and yet I can see now where this tongue uh, fits into, and then uh, I cut it with an X-Acto knife, down both of these sides, and then I basically used a Phillips head, or a flathead screwdriver, went underneath it, and I lifted the foam off of the, the plastic piece. So now I have this empty spot that the tongue fits into. All right, so if you, you can see that very well. So now that when that sits there, this back plate fits up close to the back of the helmet, or back of the mask, sorry. So you don't want a big gap there. If I don't take away the padding, there's a half, extra half inch of padding that you're gonna be trying to shove that on top of that. So that's something that we don't want to happen. But you can see as I push this in, how tight that fits, and that's what ideally what we want here. Before you do this, you should be fitting your mask so that you know it fits your head appropriately and uh, that you know that this piece can go on top of it. Okay, from there, uh, so that's the back plate. And then this is the lacrosse throat protector. Uh, I have added three holes to this, one on each side and one right down the middle here. And the intention here is that this is now going to sit back plate. This will sit like this, and I want to have it uh, room for it to flex. And I don't necessarily need it sitting like this. I want it to kind of do this. Um, in action right here so when it's in motion and the nice thing about zip ties here is I can I can play with my uh, um, looseness as, as I put this together pretty easily so I'm just gonna zip tie this together right now loop that through And, and I'm not doing this tight at all right now. I'm just trying to get the feel for where this is going to go. And again, I want my throat protector here to sit on top when I eventually tighten these up. But. start tightening this up and making sure that I'm getting down to a tightness that I feel comfortable and that we don't have too much flex where this is you know having that hang like that would naturally not be a good thing I want it to sit like this when it hits its max uh, this so I'm gonna try it with something like this hangs there probably want that a little bit tighter 
something like that, okay? And then these two, right, it'll still flex here. If I go here, I'm gonna catch up my side here. All right, that looks pretty good. I wanna bring that in just a little bit. All right, so now that's now you can see how that's sitting, right? Here, I still have my flex here. Still gets out to here. It's not gonna drop below it. So that looks pretty good. I'll throw it on the mask. See how that fits. And so right now this is obviously loose because it's just sitting on the tongue and there's nothing securing it to the tongue right now. Um, so you're gonna see a little bit of actually gap in here uh, as I put that on there. Make sure I got a good fit to it here. You can see how that is fitting this way. So that looks pretty good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'll go ahead and clip off these extra pieces now. Again, I'm using zip ties. They're convenient, they're fast. Uh, and they're just easy. I've seen examples of paracord that would work perfectly well as well. Okay, so that's gone. Let's clean that up. That looked pretty good. Okay, now with the blue gauntlets, they have, uh, at least with the coach's mask, they have this sort of cross um, structure to them. And I'm only using two of the three uh, components. And you can see, that if I went straight across, some of your masks are, are going to go, um, some masks have strapping components that go straight across here. Uh, you can see these Velcro tabs coming out. Um, that is what, on this blue gauntlet, that's gonna sit right across here and constrict that and keep that low. I don't want that. Um, so uh, it would do this. Okay, and you can see what that would, what, you can see what that would do to my flap here would push that back into my neck, so I don't want that. So with these, I have just gone with a uh, simple cross, um, and that seems to work perfectly well for what I wanted to do. Here, it's a little cross structure there. Um, I've seen some with a you know single band coming across there, which sort of has a cleaner look than this does. But, you know, that's it, we're done. Uh, you know, we can adjust the, you know, the tightness as, as we, we get onto it, but that's essentially where we're at, and, and that's essentially how it works. Um, so you wanna make sure that you don't have any gaps here, that you're aligned in your center line. Remember that you can sort of, you know, make sure that your mask is fitting and you're in good shape. If you really wanted to tie, you know, get this in tighter, you have these extra holes between here and here and here, which conceivably you could use some sort of attachment structure to make sure that those hold on and pull in this. This hammer, this this mask is pretty hammered. Um, it's at least eight years old at this point. It's not really in the same shape a standard mask is when it's beginning. You can sort of see the tilt where I've taken too many number ones to the side of my head up here and it's been dented out. So this mask is not as nice and even as a new one might be. Um, and it fits, it fits pretty well. There are still conceivable spots in here where you could, you know, stick like a metal sword or something like that, but it's not something that I'm super, con uh, super concerned about. And in general, I think that makes a really slick back of head protector for, uh, I think this back plate was 10 bucks, this part is 15 bucks, so labor, some shipping, and you're talking about a $30 back of head protector, that's nice and solid. So anyway, that's it, that, and I'm also gonna say that I didn't invent this, I got this off of a HEMA hack uh, Facebook page, it was a great idea, um, totally copied it, credit to whoever came up with it, because it's brilliant. Anyway, hope that helps.